Paul rested on a mattress of soft moss and blinked up at the cold, clean wash of stars shining between cedar limbs as if for him alone, winking back at him in a way that suggested they could see the entire arc of his life. So different from the amniotic burrow he had come from, the cold, drafty rooflessness of the wide-skied world with its filigree of stars. When she tried to reposition him, a sudden gust caught him. He slipped from her grasp and fell toward the river, feet first at a slight angle, away from the bridge, his shadow bumping over depressions and irregularities in the western cliff face as the sun shone over the high eastern ridge to cast it there. And then he was lost in white water. She told him, everything in here except the rocks and sand is alive. On the way home, just before they left the beach for the trail up the bluff, she lifted him up and nuzzled her nose and cheekbone into his chest and ribs till he laughed. Then she lowered him down and hugged him with her face and his hair till he squirmed and said, Mama, let's go. Billy there is a thoroughbred of a log man, real crackerjack fern hopper, traces his roots back to high wire Jim Newton who worked for Merrill and Ring and the pished around WW1. And old Jimmy helped him cut down two billion board foot of timber, mostly spruce. Used to free climb 250 foot trees, harness and chains be damned. He'd saw off the top of the tree and stand on the cut surface of swaying with the unsettled trunk. A magnificent stand of trees probably 140,000 or more board feet per acre in its heart, he guessed. It was no wonder that people read the presence of God or gods into the rich air and silence, the green and gold light filtering through the canopy. Even on its side, the tree was a few inches taller than she was, that had taken over 10 human lifetimes for the tree to reach this size, and imagined what it would become now that it was down. A fleet of wooden rowing shells, how many guitars or cellos, a thousand. Both of them, in their own way, thought about how even despite the chase, they were glad to be in the woods on such a day. Would this tree hugger who looked so much like him kill him? He saw himself jumping the logger in the ensuing fight which spanned the border between waking thought and dream. First one, then the other took the upper hand as they tumbled down an endless meadow of lupine and hellebore. Them bucklets think where we live is the end of the earth, end of the frontier. They come out all shaken up on the highway and ask us how we like living way out here at the end of creation. For us, his sweeping gesture indicated Vancouver Island points north. This is where the world begins.